Welcome back. This video is about scratch repair, and particularly uh, the vehicle that I'm doing today is a VW Tiguan in pure white, and it's got a scratch on the rear sill by the boot and a little ding on the door. Uh, so it's my neighbor's car. I'm gonna try and fix it. Um, it will be basically involve washing it down, a bit of prep on the area, so a bit of decon, uh, wiping down with an IPA mix, and then using a touch-up paint from paints for you then I'm going to have to use something like a hairdryer to kind of warm the panel and help dry the paint as well because it's about five degrees ambient temperature, it's December, it's pretty uh, pretty humid um, so it's not the best conditions to do it in. It's a small area though so it should be pretty pretty much all right. Uh, but yeah, we're going to see what we're going to do. So we're doing that and then in the second part of the video, maybe done in the same video, I'm not sure yet, um, that will be um, flatting it back and just polishing it out. Okay, right, anyway, it is cold, hence, so to get my bum warm. It's not too much for you, isn't it? So this is what I'm trying to address on the rear bumper. Uh, first off, I could give it a wash down. So right now you can see the Corosol doing its iron fallout removing job. That's why it's going purple. I'm going to rinse this off, then I'm going to give it a quick dry with the pet dryer before I apply AutoSmart TARDIS. And the reason I do that is uh, TARDIS just runs off the water because it's not water soluble. Therefore it wouldn't dwell and do its job. So a quick dry with that, spray that on, let that do its work. Come back, uh, give it a wipe over with a microfiber. Then I'm gonna wash that residue off again, rinse it off, wash it off, use the clay mitt, uh, rinse that off again, quick wash over again, and then I will hit it with a bit of IPA, a 20% IPA mix, just to get the surface as clean and um, oil-free and prepared for paint. That's to help with the frigid conditions we've got at the moment here. Uh, and it will help the paint cure a bit quicker and, and adhere to the bodywork a bit more. Uh, then I'm also, once I've done this, gonna go over each coat with um, the hairdryer, again, to get it to set off a bit, gas off a bit, and then I can um, apply another coat in fairly quick concession. It's not the best practice, but it will work for the conditions I've got right now. side panel so this is the gouge we've got here it actually looks really bad in that close-up picture but yeah, you can you can see that mark in front of me at the moment so again wash process here exactly the same as it was before wash over rinse corosol iron fallout remover and then a bit of TARDIS and a bit of uh, clay mitt action IPA wipe down and then prepare for paint again after a dry Uh, gouge with, with paint really. so you've done one coat dried it a bit with a hair dryer put another coat in this looks pretty ugly right um, and I'm gonna do another one on top again there you go three layers of paint on there uh, but when it's sanded back that will be flush and when you look at the end results it certainly is These are just the after shots of the uh, door and then this is the rear and uh, the before and after here. This is it up to the point of completing the painting. So then it's a case of curing and coming back for the sanding stage, which is coming up next. 
currently two weeks later and this paint has had plenty of time to uh, harden up and it's now ready to be flatted back. Actually at the end of the last bit you saw I recorded a whole other thing explaining what I was going to do and it'd be part two and then I watched it and the composition was awful and what I was saying was pretty useless. I can see it there. So decided to bin that off, it's one video and what we're going to do today is quickly just wash this down and then it will be get back to sanding this uh, paint that I put on back to be the right level and therefore you shouldn't see the scratch. So uh, wet sanding today, 1500 grit, then uh, down to 2000 or up to 2000, whichever way you look at it. Uh, and then trying to polish it out with the rotary and using MEX 105 uh, on a Lake Country medium pad, I think. That is what I'm expecting to work here, so we'll give that a go. All right. Uh, it'll be time lapse now, so no more. So, what I'm doing here is uh, sanding it back now. Um, I'm using shampoo in a bottle there as the lubricant, and I'm rinsing it off each time just to make sure I've got a clear view. Working from the 1200, sorry, 1500 grit up to the 2000, drying it off, and then polishing it out with uh, the MEGS 105 on the rotary, as you can see here. Now, I didn't get a great after shot, so I've done a freeze frame here. Well, you can see it's gone pretty clear, but it's not the best type of bridge. You can see a bit better here, though. Well, there we have it. That is now good from six inches away, whereas before it was good from six foot. I'm pretty pleased with the results of that. As you can see, can't really see it there, uh, which is fantastic. We're now going to go and do the same bit on the boot. So we'll watch all of that in time lapse. The process will be exactly the same. But yeah, fingers crossed you enjoyed that one. There we go then. That is it for now. Um, gonna let this touch up the other just done, dry out, knock it back again. It's looking better and better, and it's much like anything that you paint, multiple coats give you a better finish. I think it's obvious, but you know, I mean you're filling uh, filling paintwork anyway at home, you know, um, multiple layers of filler art between sanding it back each time and everything. Same with here, multiple layers of paint will get us where we need to be. Knowing that we are on the cusp of some of this stuff in terms of the thickness of the paint and the plastic underneath. I think my attempt will be actually just going in with uh, 2000 grit or even 2500 and just that, just to smooth it off. Maybe not take the level all the way back, but smoothing it off and then polishing that out after finishing it off. Um, so yeah, yeah, progress is being made. Slow progress. And also this was supposed to be going back at the end of January to the lease company. It's now the 19th of December. I think it might be going back next week. So uh, weather permitting, let's try and get this sorted out. All right. Look, we're making good progress. So um, even, even if it went back as it is now, you'd really have to be looking so that you could tell from the touching in, hopefully. Um, but still, try and chase perfection, or as close to it. 80% is good enough. <laughs> all right, see you in a bit. All right then, here we go. Right. Back for this final hit now. Uh, what I'm going to do is just rinse this off real quick. I've only sat here, it's been a couple of days since we last uh, last viewed this. So um, I'm going to use 2000 grit just to lightly flat this back, um, just to kind of get rid of any like, level, try and level it as much as I can, and then use the rotary again with the MEX 105, uh, and then just finish it all back. And it will look beautiful, good enough. Good enough from six inches, certainly good enough from six foot, and it will pass the inspection for uh, so the return to the lease company, which will be great. I'll bring you in close so we can see what's going on. And uh, yeah, enjoy.
And there we go. I'm pretty pleased with that. I would say it's 80% better, which is, I think, with a touch-up set, is as good as you're ever going to get, um, given the positioning of all of this and the depth of the scratches, etc., etc. Uh, the correct way to get a brilliant finish would be to properly sand back out all the uh, gouges, fill it, uh, maybe with a high build primer, that would be enough, probably, uh, and then an aerosol paint across the whole thing. Not the whole, not the whole bump of it in the sections that you need to work on. Paints for you, the paint is really good. They do do an aerosol version as well. I've gone for the touch up option. I went for the touch up option that had the clear coat that mixed in with it as well. So you get a nice coated and colored um, fix. So you don't have to go and put clear on top. So that's good. Uh, it's finished down really well. It's good quality paint. It's very thick, very easy to work with. Great color match. And uh, yeah, from six inches, you wouldn't notice this like you have to have it in the right light to notice there's been work done now when i did the video just now you saw me working on it i got it into the right light so you could see me working and see how the, the, the finish was but now you can barely see it i'm sure um partly because of the youtube compression artifacts i'm sure <laughs> but i think you get the point i'm very very happy with that and when this goes back we clean the whole car now but i'm sure it will get dirty a bit before it goes back won't harm hiding this from that point of view um but even then, you'd be very, very hard pushed to notice this. So yeah, top job. I hope this has inspired anyone that's thinking about doing some scratches repair to keep it a go yourself. It's pretty straightforward. All right, Merry Christmas, and I'll see you in the next one.